Hey, what's up, beautiful people? This is the April monthly energy report, and man, oh man, April is going to be the biggest transformation that we have ever seen in our lifetime. Uh, this is the month of months talking about going through a birthing canal uh, of awareness, of energy, of shifting, um, and we have to be prepared for the unexpected, but at the same time, the really big lesson in everything that we're going through is to, to surrender to the change. We're all going through and experiencing this massive amount of shifting and change, and we can feel it in our physical body, right? Taurus rules the physical body, and it also rules our desires, what we want, what we see as something that's of value to us. And the whole concept of value is shifting to a whole higher timeline. So this really means that as we're coming into this new energy, we're going to be seeing a lot of the, the ways that um, maybe we have thought we wanted our life to look, but now it's just, it's not doing it anymore, right? We're coming into a new place within ourselves because the frequency is raising. And this month is literally the, the most fundamental massive shift uh, for humanity coming into this next place. The, the next biggest shift is going to happen when we have the uh, Saturn-Neptune conjunction in 2025, all right? So this is the biggest month with the biggest aspects of this year, hands down. And we're going to see a lot of stuff happening. For, you know, uh, Eclipse energies, you know, they activate this month, but they'll be playing out. It's sort of like the domino starts in April, and now they'll fall over the next six months as they fall. There are each each one falling is an activation or an awareness. And then we have the choice. We have the freedom of the freedom of free will, which sometimes doesn't feel like freedom. But but the fact is that that is a right that we have uh, in order to be able to choose where we want to go. Now, if we're letting our traumas choose for us, then we're just going to get more traumatic stuff, and it's going to happen much faster to wake us up. Meaning that. If you're going down a road where you feel like things are just not getting better or you're just get, feel, feeling physically sick or, or physically unwell, if you're feeling like no matter what you do, things just aren't getting going, you need to look within, stop projecting out into the world or having the victim mentality. This is really calling out the collective, particularly in the United States. Okay, because this particular eclipse that we're having, and I'm gonna make a whole other video on the eclipse alone, um, is hitting the United States. I'm sure you guys have all seen like all the all the prophecy and all the information that's going on um, because it is a total solar eclipse. And it's the last one that was coming through here was seven years ago. There's a lot of deep, intricate spiritual significance when it comes to this energy. But really, this is going to be the biggest wake up event or series of events since 2020. So let's get into the chart, um, and I guarantee you uh, the energy that is coming around, they have many, many, many plans. And when I say they, you know who I'm talking about, right? The powers that be that are trying to, um, you know, keep us, uh, you know, subdued or suppressed uh, through fear. So this is about really facing the deepest fears about what's holding you back in your own life, and while you're facing your fears and you're stepping through it on the other side of that fear is really the life that you want to live. It's all your desires, your higher vibration desires manifest. So when I say desires, these are the heart desires, not the ego desires. And this is what all this energy in Aries is going to be bringing up. So here we see April 1st, we begin with a, we get, we begin with a bang with Mercury going retrograde at 27 degrees of Aries. So in March, we had all these energies uh, going through Pisces, and this month is when the Pisces energy is now going to start shifting more dominantly to the Aries energy. So that is the shift to this new chapter. Pisces is the mutable, letting go, allowing, accepting, surrendering energy. And now the Aries energy is like, let's go, let's do this, right? Let's make it happen. Let's jump up and, and, and step into this new life. But in order to do that, we have Chiron in the North Node here saying, who are you really? And... Do you have any kind of imposter syndrome? Do you have any kind of false, egoic, bruised, traumatized energies that need to be addressed? And if you try to go up, like you think that it's a desire that you want to create and you go into that desire and it knocks you down, 
because that desire is not coming from your heart. And that is where this month requires brutal honesty, brutal honesty with the self in order to be able to really find that place within that is showing you your truth. This is exposing how we all lie to ourselves. And we're going to see that out in the world. We're going to see so many big things that are coming through, a lot of scare tactics, a lot of things that try to keep you from traveling, keep you from going out and doing things that you want to do. Um, do not allow that to control you or to bog you down uh, because, again, they're all just scare tactics. And we have uh, Neptune, not really till next month, but it's getting a right on the edge of that energy. The 28, 29 degree energy of Pisces is the most powerful propaganda that we're going to see probably ever. And it's going to last for the next six months. So you want to talk about scare tactics that are right there on the brink. It's going to look like everything's about to crumble, but it's not. And I want to make that clear. All right. It's all the darkness is, is crumbling. It's trying to take as many things, people, situations, souls with it as it can. So with Mercury going retrograde on April 1st, April Fool's Day, okay, um, Mercury is an Aries. This is our identity. And this is also because Chiron is here is our deep wound. So we are getting right to the deepest point of our deepest wound. And that is really going to hit the nail right on the very center of the head on the solar eclipse on the 8th when the sun and the moon are exactly conjunct Chiron at 19 degrees, then Mercury is going to come around and it's going to retrograde over the sun, over Chiron, and it's going to station direct right on top of the North Node, the same degree. And the North Node is just kind of sitting at 15 degrees here. This is the halfway point, okay, in this nodal cycle. Now, towards the end, it's going to start moving a little bit faster. It really kind of, it, it's, it's so interesting how the nodes kind of, like when it was at 23 degrees, um, it kind of sat there for like two, three months. Now it's almost like this is the next chapter. This is where we got to do a lot of integration of this energy at this particular place. So wherever 15 degrees of Aries Leo is in your chart, really look at that as a focal point for shifting into like at the halfway point, shifting into this new place, seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, seeing that there's all this new stuff coming in, but but now like that should give you extra motivation and impetus to want to step into that new life. All right. So, and also we have Jupiter at the very beginning of the month here at 17 degrees of Taurus, now just three degrees away from Uranus. So that Uranian Jupiter energy, uh, we're really going to be feeling this stuff in our physical body. This is, this is activating Kundalini uh, life force energy. Be very cognizant of where your attention, where you're paying attention to, especially with your sexual energy. Now, sexual energy is life force energy. So really, that's your creative flow. So are you consuming or are you creating? This is where it's going to try to get you to consume and waste all of that sexual life force energy because it's going to be peaking this month. And, in order, and because it's going to be peaking, it's going to be easy to get distracted. Um, and so this is where like learning to sit still, learning to meditate, like slowing down. The faster the energy gets, the more we need to slow down because slowing down brings us back to center and gets us out of our head. Okay. Now, another significant uh, aspect going on this month is Saturn and Mars. They're going to be conjuncting here in the middle of the month. And also uh, Venus and Neptune, which are pretty much conjunct here at the beginning of the month. Um, we're going to be seeing it exact um, at 28 degrees on April 3rd. Now, Venus is exalted here in Pisces. So this is a positive. Um, but this is also highlighting the intuitive part of what we really maybe want to create. Th this is getting a lot of visualizations, maybe some kind of crazy dreams too, but really like uh, seeing the highest version of this next chapter of what we want to create, what we want to do with our lives. So it's very important to allow an open and safe space to let this energy, let us receive all this energy. If you are blocked in the way that you receive, uh, you could miss some things, okay? And how do we receive? By being still. So it all comes back to slowing down the mind, learning how to channel that mind. I personally channel my energy and transmute all that distraction through weight training. I, I treat weight training like my meditation. I mix my experience with martial arts, my experience with with uh, with uh, functional practices like Pilates and even yoga, 
all right, and use my breath with my movement and my visualization processes in order to optimize my physical body in connection with my mind and keep that mind-heart coherence stillness through discipline. Whatever your process is, I'm happy to help you figure that out if you need some help and guidance. Uh, but if you're doing it on your own, just find whatever you that makes you feel alive and passionate and driven that is feeding your soul in a positive way. Anything that you might be doing that is is depleting nutrients or making you tired in some kind of way or depleting your energy. Now, when you're doing what you love to do creatively, eventually you're going to get tired too because the brain only has a certain amount of capacity. But this is where you feel good about exhausting yourself. Like, yeah, it's, I feel really good about what I did today. I helped the world in some way or I you know, fed these animals or I helped this homeless person. Whatever it is that you're doing, go out and be of service to others because really, especially right now, the, the mirroring process of human beings is peaking out. With Chiron conjuncted the North Node in this total solar eclipse, whoever that comes into our life, whether it's just walking by them or it's, um, you know, in interaction through, you know, connecting online, uh, however it might come about, there's a reason for it and there's something to learn from it. So whatever it is that you're getting back from the external world is a reflection of what you need to work on within yourself. And that is always the case but it is especially important right now, okay? So with Saturn and Mars here in Pisces, this is trying to put form and an actionable structure to the, the fluid or flow of the energy that's going on. So this can be a little difficult, a little confusing. This is also on the outside where we're gonna start to see all this propaganda of war because Mars is the god of war, right? Saturn is the lord of karma. So when we have these two guys together, they're, they're two, they call them malefics. I don't know, Mars is my chart ruler and Saturn is, is the ruler of my son. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very familiar. Uh, this is like athletics or the military or, you know, um, creating community, right? Tribe, creating tribe, uh, all that kind of stuff. It's like saying, okay, it's time to take all these intuitive downloads or all this guidance that I'm feeling and put it in to a practical, practical, actionable plan and make it productive, not destructive. That's a higher vibration of this energy, okay? But it can turn destructive real quick. It can turn to frustration. It can turn to irritation. It can turn to burnout if you're not, if, if you're not monitoring your own energy very, very carefully. Also, and this is with physical training, this is with nutrition, this is with um, connecting to people, whatever it is that you're doing there, we have to learn how to mitigate our contraction with our expansion energy. So when you're working out, right, lifting weights is contracting the muscles, all right? Lifting weights is only a portion, maybe I'd say 30% of actually being fit and or in shape. What we also is ju just as important is sleep. It's expansion. And there's also stasis, which I would say is sleep, but that's where you're recovering. So that's also, a, in a sense, an expansion. But the expansion would be getting massages, going to do a sound bath, doing um, any kind of recovery technique like infrared sauna or ice baths, things like that, right? Now, more than ever, we need to blend the contraction with the expansion and really make sure that the balance is there um, and uh, and listen to our body because our body is going to be speaking to us very, very loudly, especially with this Jupiter-Uranus conjunction coming up. So back to the chart, all right, we have um, the sun conjuncting the north node exactly at 15 degrees here, which is shining a light on the direction that, that we want to go, Okay. Now, Venus here is also at 29 degrees, just passing its conjunction to Neptune. It's getting ready to come into Aries. So this is a lot of downloads, a lot of seeing and understanding, and finally uh, having the, the we're at like the starting line of the race. And the gun is up in the air, and this is the point where it's about to go off. Now we, we're here. We've already done the work. However we prepared, we prepared, all right? This is when the activations, probably the coronal mass ejections or the solar flares or 
whatever it is that you know that the other powers that you know I don't even want to say powers that be, but you know who I mean um, are going to throw at us. We need to come together. In order to come together with others, we need to come together with ourselves, right? So the sun conjunct in the north node is highlighting the direction that we we know or we see that we want to go, but there's still obstacles in the way. But now that we see the obstacles, but now there's opportunities for us to step into these obstacles and overcome them. That's really what these energies are all about. And once we get to the total solar eclipse, that will be on the 8th, okay? The moon, the sun, and Chiron are all exactly conjunct at 19 degrees with Mercury that's now retrograde at 24 degrees. So Mercury's retrograde, as this is hitting us, we're in a period of self-reflection going within simultaneously with the desire to put this structure together of how we're going to take action. So we're still in this place of putting it down, bringing it together. But now we also have Venus in the mix here in Aries. So now, so now like, you know, Aries with Venus, very impulsive. Like we feel this, we want to do it. So we got to, we got to kind of temper that, that uh, compulsion for propulsion through mitigation of our mind this is why uh non uh non non sleep deep rest protocol or yoga nidra is really good i was just talking to my friend brandon about this um or techniques that when we feel like we get overwhelmed we gotta do something to bring ourselves back down to ground so we can replenish the dopamine in our brains things are moving so fast things are activating so fast that we have to learn how to mitigate that be honest with ourselves and let us you know, take a break. We need to take a break, right? Like step back if it gets too much. This is going to be learning our thresholds for overwhelm and getting things done. So if you start to like, if a five minute task is taking you an hour, stop, go for a walk, go lay down, go take a swim real quick. Uh, I would just jump in an ice bath because <laughs> that just woo, wakes it up real quick. But now we have Jupiter just two degrees away from Uranus as well. Now, the Jupiter-Uranus conjunction, when that comes together, right, this is going to activate. I think this is when like a massive collective kundalini activation is going to happen. And that's what's going to be the major awakening experience. And this is where we're definitely going to see something going on out, out in the world. Um, that's going to be a big fear tactic, too. So don't fall for the bullshit. Stay focused on what you want to create. All right. Also, we have Saturn and Mars pretty close to an exact conjunction here as well. So Jupiter and Uranus and Saturn and Mars together, big, unexpected, holy shit, like, let's go. I know what I need to do, but I'm still trying to figure out how to structure it. I don't want to overwhelm, overwhelm myself too much, so I got to take a step back. Um, so there's also being around the right people. If you're around people that not are right for you, uh, it's going to be shown to you. And whether it's an intuitive internal process or whether it's you get backstabbed or fucked over somehow. Okay, so, so just be aware of that. And, um, you know, like self-love, we need we need self-love and self-compassion while calling out any kind of residual victim mentality that we have within ourselves. So if you are getting triggered, if you see yourself getting triggered by anything or, you know, in everything, it's it's reflecting a part of your unhealed, wounded self and screaming at you to to clean it out. Because as we pass through this threshold, if you are too stubborn and you are determined to just not do anything about it, right? This is where it's like, okay, you cannot go past go now if you don't face this. There is no more avoiding. There is no more bypassing. There is no more stuffing it down. If you are doing, if you are stuffing down emotions, right? Emotions get stuck in our tissue. Jupiter, I mean, uh, Taurus represents the physical body. It represents the tissue. Uranus in Taurus is our central nervous system. Our central nervous system is getting hyperactive with Jupiter. It's making it loud as hell. Okay. And with this stuff in Aries, this is feeling everything so much according to our identity and our belief systems, right? Aries is, is who we are. It's the first sign of the Zodiac. It's like, I want to get up and out there and see the world, right? So these three houses, this is totally focused on, on getting the intention right. Or seeing and believing that we're worth of the intention that or the life that we want to create, or I really feel like that we're destined to create because I think that we all have uh, a purpose and a destiny. 
And if you'd like to know yours, you know, you can um, uh, reach out to me, look in the description box below. We can get a reading in, you know, and, I, and I'd be more than happy to work with you. Um, but then Aries is, okay, now that I have the intention and I see it, it's time to start this new chapter and cut all the stuff out of my life that is no longer serving me. And how do I do that? I pay attention to everything in my body, see what makes me feel good, see what makes me feel like shit. And then, and then when you are taking care of yourself and you're, and you're tuning your energy, you're paying your attention to what your body is telling you to do, Jupiter and Uranus is going to give you a big, huge, unexpected surprise, right? Now, it may come in an unexpected way. It may, may come, you may be looking over here like it's going to happen over here. When it, then, whoops, no, it actually came over here. Like, well, I didn't expect that. Go with it, right? How flexible are you also in your approach? Because as we're growing, we're going through a major growth spurt this month. And as you're growing, it, you're going to become a new version of yourself. So you have to be willing to go into those uncomfortable feelings because these are what is going to teach you how to enact the, the behavior patterns and the processes and the structure emotionally, physically, and spiritually of how to be, be in this new space to be able to live your best life. Because essentially, we are moving into a time where the, the, the electromagnetism of our heart center is what is guiding us to all the success or all the, all the, all the lessons that we're going to manifest in this new chapter of our lives. And we also have Pluto coming into two degrees um, of uh, of Aquarius here on let's see what on uh, April twelfth. Okay, now this is where Pluto is going to stop. Pluto is going to go retrograde next month. So we're now starting the first. We're now out of all all systems go process. But this is good because we're going to need this time to be able to adjust. All right, but if you think about it, Pluto is slowing down. So the energy of Pluto, it's not strong enough already, right? Um, that energy is going to start getting more intense because as it slows down to stop, that's when the energy really starts to um, get deeper. And as it stops and then goes retrograde, whatever we did in the last few months, now is bringing the karmic justice or lessons, <sighs> excuse me, for everything that our soul is learning. Now, not only that too, with Neptune being uh, coming up to 29 degrees, we have two out of the three outer planets that are hitting that um, that anorectic degree point because Pluto will be coming back to 29 degrees only for like six weeks, but that's the last portion of Capricorn at 29 degrees that's going to see uh, for the rest of our lives. We have Neptune, of course, coming in and going through that threshold into um, Gemini, but Net, I mean, uh, Jupiter's moving pretty quickly. So, but that's even when Jupiter comes to Gemini, that's going to be even even more of a uh, sort of right or left, um, right or wrong, um, you know, sort of angel and demon on the shoulder kind of energy. But it's also going to be much better for communicating, for getting out there and talking to people, for creating community, which whatever they're going to do out there is going to require us to come together as a community. And when Jupiter goes into Gemini, that's going to really benefit that, but it's also going to get people even more in their heads. And right now, the energy is so potent that people that are not doing the heart-brain coherence work are getting really stuck in their heads. And they and you guys really need to practice. Like, if you're not, if you're not doing something to learn how to get a hold of that and control that as opposed to trying to control your surroundings, you're not going to control things outside of you right now. It's just not going to happen. You can try, but your hands are just going to keep slipping and slipping and they're going to fall off. All right. The only thing you can control is your own emotional state. So you have to discipline that. Okay. So uh, Mercury and the sun are going to conjunct at 22 degrees. Um, and so once Mercury goes with the sun, that's Mercury combust. That's getting more uh, intuitive epiphanies and awareness. And this is right after the eclipse. So we are going to be getting... Epiphany after epiphany after epiphany after change after shock and awe. All this stuff is going to be happening at lightning speed. So as the energy is, it's going to be so fast this month, guys. Um, and it's going to be, that, and that speed is going to get deeper and deeper because we're engraving ourselves into this new chapter. Okay, so the inner work, I cannot tell you how important it is. And also too, this month, I would recommend even like be very careful with plant medicines or if you're doing any work with like mushrooms or 
Um, I'd say combo is probably the one medicine that's safe because it's not a psychedelic, it's a purgative. And that really helps to clear your mind and get rid of all the parasites and the gunk out of the gut. But if you're working with ayahuasca or iboga or bufo, be very, very careful this month because the portal is open so wide and the darkness is just coming through. I think that CERN is um, going to be doing something with the Hadron Collider this, this month. That's my personal opinion. Um, but anyways, we have now all this energy coming uh, that's now in Aries. So Aries is a cardinal energy. It's like, okay, I, I'm done sitting still. I have to learn how to carry that stillness within myself, why I'm going out into the world now and really carry all this stuff that I've learned into actionable, practical application. No matter what's going on out in the world, watch how much you're consuming. In fact, whatever you are consuming, it should be very carefully thought out and laid out, all right? But we need to produce as opposed to consume. And what we produce is when we get together as a community and take responsibility for our lives and for what and for everything that's going on, right? And as we do that, say, hey, I have this skill, you have that skill, let's put our skills together and create some magical shit, right? And, you know, when we do that, now we're creating our reality. Now we're in the present moment because we have to connect. We have to minimize this right here, cell phones and technology, or at least utilize the technology to our advantage to produce more production, less consumption, okay? And whatever we are consuming, whether it's food, entertainment, um, you know, like watch it, watch the mindless stuff because that's like the new addiction. That is, that is how they're getting people to just zone out. All right, we're gonna be really careful of that. So anyways, um, this second week of April is going to be massively transformative. And particularly with the solar eclipse, it's a total solar eclipse. And it's right on top of the United States' uh, Chiron. Chiron, that, that Chiron's at 20 degrees. Um, so round up uh, with Chiron here, and it'll be 20 degrees. All right. So this is essentially initiating the Chiron return on top of the Pluto return for the United States. And we're coming into the Uranus return as well. The last time Uranus was in this position uh, was during World War II. I'm going to get into all that during the solar eclipse reading. But with all these outer planets coming into the returns for the United States, one. But number two, also coming into new signs. Uh, Uranus will be coming into its uh, new sign next year. Okay. So next year is really when it's going to get pretty, uh, the world is going to look like a very different place, guys. And it's starting now. Literally this month, April, is the first month of the rest of our lives. Uh, and this is, it's kind of like the final exam of all the stuff we've been going through for, for the past four years, okay? Actually, I'd say for the past seven years, because really the eclipse that happened in 2017 in August um, uh, started this process. And now it's closing out that seven-year cycle and starting a brand new one where I believe the light is going to start taking over and really getting stronger. And there's going to be a massive... Uh, wealth transfer, again, for all the people doing all the good work um, in this life, because everybody is becoming so empathic that there's no suppressing it now. There's no there's no putting it down. There's no anything. And when we listen to that voice and we allow it to guide us, that's, you know, God's voice guiding us. It's going to uh, guide us into the place where we are destined to be in our highest vibrational good living in our in Christ consciousness. OK, so, of course, the big the big shebang, the big time that we're all waiting for here. Um, oh, actually, I'm sorry. Let's go back for a second. Uh, Chiron will be conjunct to uh, Mercury retrograde at 19 degrees, the same exact degree as the solar eclipse. Okay. And during this, Venus is now creeping up on the North Node at 14 and 15 degrees, respectively. So Mercury is going to be crossing through all these energies. So we're double checking, double tapping, making sure, seeing, you know, did I, am I looking at my wound? Am I being honest with myself? Am I allowing myself to grow? And blah, 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 blah. Okay. And um, we have Mars now creeping up into the third deacon uh, of um, Pisces as well. So Mars is just cru cruising through there. And when Mars is in Pisces, um, this is like the spiritual warrior, right? This is like, you know, Mars wants to go out there and just, you know, party it up a little bit and, he gets with his friends and then his friends bring him to like a sound bath instead. 
But then when he gets a sound bath, he realizes, wow, this is actually cool. And I feel so amazing. And, you know, like when he's open, um, this is clearing out uh, a lot of toxic masculinity that needs to go. We're coming into a more um, decentralized, uh, everybody take responsibility by by honoring the divine feminine and the divine masculine in themselves and in the world. So we stop, you know, so we stop freaking hurting people, hurting, hurting the earth, right? So April 18th is when Jupiter comes to, actually, I, so on the 17th of April is when Jupiter gets to 21 degrees um, of uh, Taurus, which is the same degree as Uranus. Now, it won't be exact until, until the 20th, okay? That's when Jupiter and Uranus, so it's, it's going to be in the same degree for about five days because these planets move kind of slow. At this point, now we're in Taurus season. Now the sun's in Taurus. So now the sun's shining in the same area, which is our physical body and our desires that we want to create. Now we're having a bam, a massive, this is like nuclear fission kind of energy that's clearing out limitations and, and, and ending a 14-year cycle, bringing us into a new 14-year cycle uh, that's going to be it that we've been doing the inner work. This is this this is on uh, with the um, solar eclipse and with Mars conjunct Saturn and with Jupiter conjunct Uranus. This is really on many levels getting us equipped with the high vibrational armor, so to speak, to know how to walk out into the world and not be of it and share our message, share our teaching, share what we do. This is where light workers are going to really step up and into their responsibility and empowerment. Big, big time. There's going to be so much, so much healing energy blasting through us that, um, it, you know, people like massage therapists or like people that work with their hands, people that do sound healings and things like that, people that, uh, I don't know, um, do even energy healings, uh, you know, the uh, the chakras in the hands or all, all the healing energy is getting a massive upgrade in the physical body. So if you are a medical intuitive, you read energy, uh, you know, and you can read people's, you know, uh, imbalances or you do astrology or if you're a massage therapist, all those things, we're getting a massive upgrade and jacking up the power and empowerment of these modalities. And um, the people that are on the other side of the spectrum that are going to be just waking up and have no idea what's going on. Um, the efficiency and effect or the value of what you can provide is going to feel dozens of times stronger. Okay. But it also requires a lot of strength and responsibility to be able to handle that amount of power. And uh, so we have to learn to surrender through the nervous system going through all these upgrades. All right. The nervous system is going to get, it's going to get smacked around a little bit. And um, that's why we got to relax and might feel a little burnt out or having a lot of these ascension symptoms. Let it go through you. And you really got to take care of yourself, you know, through your nutrition, through your, uh, through the balancing of the expansion and contraction. Just get it done. Okay. Um, and when it's ready, it's ready. You can't, you can't rush this. You can't force this. It just has to be, you know, one step at a time. So here now on, uh, Mar uh, Mercury will go direct on April 25th, right when it gets down to 15 degrees, where the North Node is at in 15 degrees. So it's 15 degrees is big um, all month. And uh, we have Mars coming into its conjunction with Neptune here as well. On the, uh, on the 28th, it'll be conjunct at 28 degrees. And Neptune is just about at 29 degrees. So right before Nept Neptune doesn't go to 29 degrees until uh, May 1st, I believe. But Mars is crossing over at that anorectic degree as well. So we're getting a lot of intuitive downloads between the Venus and the Mars, right? So we had Venus and Mars conjunct uh, in February um, in, in Aquarius. Now it's sort of going through another growth spot, which is our divine masculine, divine feminine, and seeing what we need to clear and purge uh, in our masculine feminine ways to receive and then distribute all of our gifts and all of our, uh, really our energy, okay? Uh, now, by this time, April 28th, we have uh, Jupiter now at 23 degrees. Now Jupiter is on its trajectory to start another chapter as well. Now it's beyond Uranus. Um, Uranus sort of infused Jupiter with its, with its lightning bolt of new DNA activation. 
And uh, we're in Taurus season. We have Venus here now at the anorectic degree of 28 degrees of Aries. Um, Venus, of course, likes being in Taurus better because that's his ruler. Um, so, you know, this is where like, it's like, I want it, I want it, I want it now, right? But again, the patience is going to be important. So now that we have um, Mercury uh, going direct, it's going to go across Chiron uh, and eventually get to Venus and then catch up to the sun as well. So we're this Chiron energy with the total solar eclipse being exactly conjuncted with the Chiron being at, at the placement of the Chiron of the United States when it was developed. The United States, the deepest wounds of the United States, meaning that all the belief systems, all like the ways that uh, all the propaganda and how it's affecting people, like all the different groups that are out there and whatnot, the deepest wounds are going to be on the surface. We're going to see, it look, it's going to look like people are possessed out there. Um, but for the people like us that are doing this inner work, um, this is where all month it's really going to be about looking directly at our fear, looking directly at our deepest wound and loving it. Okay, this is the work. This is the truest of true work uh, for stepping into this new chapter is loving our deepest wound and our deepest imperfections and imbalances. And once we love it, then we infuse ourselves with the teaching of that. A lot of this is inner child work, right? Like accepting every part of us that we haven't learned to accept yet. And with that acceptance comes the lesson that is trying to teach us. We infuse that into us. And then we go out in the world with that vulnerability with healthy boundaries. And when we have healthy boundaries, we know what we want. We don't necessarily have expectations, right? But if we know what we want, we're going out there to get it and things don't align with how we want, then we continue to shuffle and change. But we also always see it within ourselves first and foremost. We don't go out and blame anybody else because that's a victim mentality, right? We take responsibility for who we are and we own it. And the more we own it, you know, we see the synchronicities in everything that's going on in our lives. So be easy or uh, be kind to yourself, especially this month. We'll take a break when you need to take a break. Journal if you need to journal. However it is that you get in your flow state, this is really about learning how to get into flow state um, on command within yourself. Okay, so I hope this helps. Please like, share, and subscribe if this resonates with you. And I'll see you all on the next video. And uh, if you'd like a reading for me, uh, just contact me. All the information is down in the description box below. And I'll talk soon. All right? Aho.